Yo, what is up Smash players? This is just going to be an off-the-cuff video about playing Smash Bros and the human brain because I think top players and the best players in the world just have better brains. Now, I'm not saying that because I think they're naturally born with it. I do think the brain is very adaptable and we're going to talk about that today. Now, the very first book I read that actually mattered to me or that actually made a difference in my life is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And he is the reason I created my first YouTube video or my first YouTube videos, one of my you know, greatest first YouTube videos. Basically, he says there are two types of thinking. There's fast thinking and slow thinking. So if I tell you what, if I ask you what two plus two equals, you'll say four right away without even have, having to think. You just can think for a split second after hearing two plus two equals four. Now, if I ask you to uh, do like 72 times three, like even that I kind of have to like think out, I have to do a slow thinking. I have to think, you know, three, six, 21. I don't wanna get it wrong, but it, hopefully it's 216. Now, when you play Smash Bros, I often say every little thing counts and every little thing does count. Every little thing, really matters, but to be very honest and blunt, Smash Ultimate isn't the most technical game, and the top and pro players aren't differentiable based on how they play. And this was actually proven in a recent Reddit post about Neotono going over two sets between a Zero to Samus and a Fox, and people had to guess which match was between the top professionals and which match was with like the semi-professionals. And a lot of top players, like, you know, all the Japanese top players, like Abadango, like, I don't have the Reddit post open, um, but, like, very many Japanese top players were, like, obviously, like, the second set is the pros, and the first set is, like, the semi-pros. Um, I think there was, like, there was, like, eight who were, like, who said the second one was the pros, and there was, like, two, it was, like, Kuro and someone else who were, like, no, 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 the first one is the pros. And it turns out the first match was against the pros, and the second match was against the semi-pros, and, like, everyone was, like, wow, like, Pacera Man and uh, Shiki, who were the two, like, Fox and Zero Suit, they were, all the Japanese players were like, yo, this is not our fault, this is your fault for having embarrassing gameplay. But in reality, you actually can't really differentiate what top players and pro players are doing differently in their actual play. It's really just about what they're thinking. I definitely thinking, think uh, fast and slow thinking is everything. Now, to me, I think slow thinking is absolutely busted and absolutely broken. And we all know what slow thinking is because I know you have experienced like I have and what sparked this video is recently, you know, I was just having very many situations where I was in these like last hit last, or I was in these last hit situations where I was last stock very high percent and my opponent was like just fresh off a of stock. And I, it's like, I went in, it's like how I would say my third eye opened and it felt like I was just reading their soul and I just got read after read. Like I knew exactly what they were gonna do. Gonna do. Like I knew they were gonna do this. I knew they were gonna do this. It's like my brain was like thinking insanely like ahead of itself. It was just extremely high quality slow thinking. It was just slow thinking like to the best of my abilities. Um, and I'd bring it back. And this isn't a one-off thing. This happens literally all the time. It happens so much to all human beings who have played Smash Bros competitively where they're like about to lose and they make a huge comeback because they read this and this and this and this this because your brain is thinking so hard. Now, the whole point about thinking fast and slow is that you can't always be slow thinking because we're human beings. So there's a lot of stuff that's automated with, through fast thinking. Now, the thing is when we play, when I was, when I make those comebacks, when I'm about to lose, I honestly feel like right then and there, like I'm a top player. Like I think to myself, like if I could play like that, where I'm just thinking so deeply about what the opponent will do and how I could punish it, then like I'd be like the best player. But again, that is a human flaw. However, I'm making this video because I really think we could change our brains and the brains of top players have changed to become better, much better at slow thinking more often. To be honest, I don't really know. I don't really know whether, you know, people say it's like, yo, 
top players, you know, they get to slow things so well because their fast thinking is so good, right? Like they have like such good autopilot, but you know, how do they get the good autopilot? Because to get fast thinking, you need slow thinking. It's like two plus two equals four. That's fast thinking. But when you first learned it, you needed slow thinking to figure out that two plus two equals four. And then it became into your fast thinking, right? So it takes slow things to, to learn fast thinking. So I really think a big thing is your ability to like slow think, how often you slow think and like um, allowing slow thinking to happen. And that in turn will improve your fast thinking. I wanna talk about thinking because your brain has like very many parts. And I noticed when I was making those comebacks that like the front part of my brain was like very activated. It felt like I was almost like flexing the front part of my brain, which is the prefrontal cortex. And that's because that part of the brain is uh, thinking. And you might've noticed that I actually looked uh, up here when I was trying to remember the name of the front part of the brain, because when you look to your top left, that means you're trying to remember something. And, I, and I'm gonna go over that right now. And the point is, when you look in a certain direction, it actually is because your brain is activating in a certain part. So uh, if I'm trying to remember something, I'll look in the top left. And that's because like you tilt your head back um, because the back part of your brain is like memory. So it's kind of it's, it's kind of like you're leaning into it. It's like, what was I doing yesterday? Now, the, the, the other side is like the top right. And, you know, I know the back is memory and the front is like thinking. Apparently, you know, each side, each hemisphere, like the left and right, they both have their own purpose. So that's why like... If you look in like the top left, you'll be like trying to remember something. But if you look into the top right, you're like visual visualizing something. So it's like if you look in the top right, it's like it's like there are mountains. Like, can you see the mountains, Jimmy? Can you see the sunset? You know, you look in the top right. Now, when you look in the bottom right, you are very emotional. So if you see someone after like a bad loss, they'll be like they'll look in the top right. They'll be feeling sad. Now, on the other hand, to the bottom left, you're, you're talking to yourself in your head. So it's like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have done that. Now, that one I actually want to talk about specifically because you're leaning in. So you're using your thinking part. And usually it's like, it's like you're thinking. It's like two plus two equals four. It's like he was doing that. And if he was doing that, like when, when, when you were talking to yourself, you're often thinking, right? So you'll look in the bottom left, like, uh, when he rolls there, I need to like go cover this, right? So, uh, it's also why like, you know, when you play, you lean in, right? You lean in with like the forward part of your head and you might say, okay, well, that's just because you're trying to get closer to the screen. And that's true. But if you, even if you get really close and people move all the way up, that you still can't play just like lean back. You'll still, even just your neck, even just your head, you'll, you'll go in a bit because it's like you're really trying to activate the front part of your brain. Now, what I was doing after I had those like experiences with like, I was like, I was like, I had enough of these times where I just go super saiyan, where I just go top player mode. And I just act like nothing happened. Like, like, I just act like I'm sick, but I don't actually think about like, what just happened with my brain? Like, why was I just like reading my opponent's soul as if like, I was a top player and they were just in my hands the whole time. And a big thing I feel is like you stop improving because you stop trying to like flex your brain and whether you mean that literally or not, um, at least for me, I, I could actually feel it when I think really hard, I feel it in the front part of my brain. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try practicing and actually like trying to activate that part of my brain, right? Um, and I, I really think it's like, Recently, I made a video called the mundanity of excellence. And the biggest thing was like to practice differently. And I and I do really think that's very important. Because when you practice the same thing, uh, in the same way, like your body like adapts and gets used to it. And I think like, Arnold Schwarzenegger with like working out, like, and even just, you know, everyone who works out, but he was the first person I heard talk about this. And he was saying, you want to, you need to change your workout routine, like every like month or so. Because like, yeah, you can keep doing the same thing. And even if you're adding additional weight, like you need to do something different, like you need to do it different. So your body adapts. 
Now, I, I want to talk about brain adaptability in the book Peak and how your brain can adapt because your brain and body are very adaptive. Uh, and that is actually because, well, I'll just skip to this part. It's, it's because your brain actually doesn't want to adapt, which is so funny. Now, imagine you're working out and I was doing like, you know, uh, bicep curls. And every week my body is like, like I do bicep curls or every day. And then my body's like, oh my God, like I need to repair my bicep. I need to, it's like, oh, I hate having to go out. Okay, I have homeostasis, right? Which is like the stability, right? Everything like stays the same. But now because you work out, your body's like, oh, now I have to change and try to like repair my bicep. So if you do that every single day, eventually your body is gonna be like, okay, I do not want to keep changing, having to repair the bicep. I'm just gonna make the bicep stronger and then I don't have to change. And it's the exact same thing with your brain. If you keep like doing the same type of thing, well, first of all, your body's getting used to it. So imagine you keep doing the bicep curl, then your biceps are gonna get stronger, right? And then, and then it'll stop changing. Then you, you could add more weight. You see, you could add more weight, but it might be a lot harder to trigger your body to change because maybe it's like, uh, well, I have to repair it, but like, it's not enough to make me want to change. You know, it's so lazy to change. It's like, it likes stability and it could deal with, you know, having to like deal with a little extra weight, but you want to push it and you want to do it different. So then your body is forced. Your body is forced like, oh, okay, I have to repair like, you know, the the thighs because he's never worked out his thighs before or have to increase muscle size in his thighs because he never worked out his thighs before or like you just work out your bicep differently and it's like okay well i didn't really adapt to to repair the bicep this way so it increases like muscle like sideways or something um you know th that's all like on the on the fly on the spot for me so um, I want to talk about now peak, how to master almost anything uh, by Anders Ericsson. And I don't want to make this video last too long. So I'm going to try to wrap it up. But he talks about, you know, the brain and body are very adaptable, most adaptable in young children. And he literally says in the prelude to this book or the introduction, over my years of studying experts in various fields, I found that they all developed the abilities um, the same way these like students did who got like amazing abilities uh, through dedicated training that drives changes in the brain. And I think like that's case in point right there that we need to think more about changing our brains. I think we need to stop thinking about how to, imp well, we do want to think about how to improve a smash ultimate, but I think we want to think about how to improve our brains and that's the purpose of this video it's not to say that we're all born with a certain brain it's not to say that like you know natural factors you know limit us it's to say that changing our brain is a key part to becoming a top player because again you can't visually see who's a top player in a game like smash ultimate that's not very technical to be very honest and the top players don't even use the most tech it's really how they think and how they think actually does have a lot to do with their brain. And I want to see if I can find, you know, some quotes to end off on. Yes. So one of the key differences among different types of practice is the extent to which they harness the adaptability of the human brain and body. But, you know, for us, it's not really body unless, you know, you're working on uh, muscle memories with your hand. But a lot of the reasons we, we want to do like different kinds of practice is to try to make the brain adapt. And just with how we, we uh, practice, we want to make the brain adapt so it's better. It's like not just our thoughts, but it's actual like the brain processing, processing ability and like understanding. Um, it's actually like a, a lot about the brain's abilities and how you could make it that. It's not just like trying to, it's not like who has the best memory. Um, and usually who has the best problem solving skills that, that's a big thing and it has to do with slow thinking and slow thinking and any thinking has to do with on it honestly it's like i do think it has to do with your brain and it's not like a math problem 
where you might just not know the like the answer i i think literally anything if any single thing in this game every everything in this game is like self-explanatory like everything you can't deal with has actually a very simple answer like have you ever thought about that like someone's like oh how do i beat this guy like who's spamming shield well come on you grab right it's like oh how do i beat this guy who's just like spamming landing aerials it's like the answer is obvious like block it parry it you know whiff punish it right it's like don't get hit by it there's always an extremely obvious answer so it's not like it's not like you don't have like the the understanding of like the principles it's not like math where you don't have the math principles or you approach the problem wrong and like you can't get to the end answer it's like even if you approach the problem wrong and like smash like if you break it down like there's a meme posted on my discord about like the 2 a.m like self-match analysis and it's like find the problem and then it's just like solve the problem it's like did you get hit yes okay don't get hit right it's like did they shield your attack it's like yes it's like don't attack their shield it's like did you get punished it's like don't throw out a move that can get punished right everything is very answerable every problem is extremely solvable there's nothing that isn't like obvious like whenever someone asks a question on r slash crazy hand i kind of just think to myself like do they even think about it they and sometimes like i ask the same questions like how do i beat like a character like spamming whatever and it's like it's so obvious right it's like you know shield beats attack attack beats like grab and grab beats shield like it's so obvious and yeah yeah it's like okay but it's like move a space on sh uh, safe on shield okay then hit him when he before he starts the move like do hit him what, what he does after it's like none of the i'm not trying to remember any like smash principles i'm literally just thinking and it's always obvious because everything has startup everything has lag everyone does something after something so every problem is so solvable so if you could just slow think about these problems you will always be solving them. Here is something else, and that's you seldom improve much without giving the task your full attention. So you don't really improve unless you're fully focused. And I think that's another important thing is that you want to think a lot harder than I thought you would. I actually think you really want to think hard. Just don't overdo it. Just don't, you don't want stress. You don't want anxiety. You just really want to think hard. Cause like to me, that's like upping the intensity and that's like to me i feel like that's lifting a really heavy weight without going overboard right i really think like i haven't been thinking hard enough when i play um and i, I want to bring up something from deep work by cal newport and this is another he has this equation and it's like high quality work produced is time spent times the intensity of focus so i spend a lot of time playing smash bros a lot and i feel like it's like, yeah, I, I try to think, I try to focus, but I feel like I'm not trying hard enough to really think. Because like, who likes to think? It's tiring, it's exhausting. Another quote, the best way to get past any barrier is to come at it from a different direction. And to me, that's like doing, just changing up your workout routines. I really think a lot of this is like related to like, or can be related or made analogies to working out in fitness. So this video is getting way too long. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I want you to have a good day and I'll see you next time.